is to honor the wishes made by Katie and written instructions in, if this day were ever to come, as well as Courtney and their families. We're here to walk with them and with one another, and to do so in such a way that darkness will not prevail. And to that end, I ask that you would bow your heads and join me in prayer. God, your word is clear that the authority that Katie served under has your approval. And the injustice that took place in her life being cut down, you despise. We are angry and frustrated, stunned and sad that an act so cruel has happened to one of our own. I ask that you would shower mercy and grace upon our broken hearts, a spouse and grieving families, to a child who will never know the joy of knowing Katie, to those who Katie served with in Pennington County and St. Croix County, to our neighbors who may feel a little less... ...a possible drunken driver in Glendale, Wisconsin, about 60 miles east of the Twin Cities on Saturday when she was shot and killed by the suspect. Deputy Lysing had been with the department since last year. She leaves behind a wife and baby son and is the fourth officer in the region to be killed on the job within just the last month. Let's listen in. We're now going to enter a time of remembering Katie with thoughts from her relatives brought by those she's served with, as well as thoughts from other leadership in the county. But we begin by welcoming Pastor Julie Scheibe, who along with Pastor Rob Pilant, made the trip up from Maquanago at the request of Courtney and her family. My heart just breaks for each of you. I can't begin to imagine how broken your hearts are right now. This isn't how things are supposed to be. Katie, strong, determined, filled with love for her family. This amazing woman should still be with us. Katie, your colleague, your friend, your sister, your mom, your daughter, your wife. She lived with a passion. One of her greatest passions was to protect you. Your belief in her and your love for her filled her with strength. It helped her build her courage to be all that we needed her to be, a hero. A hero stands in the gap so we can have the freedom to live the lives that God has given us. When we sat and talked with the family, it was so obvious how much you adored and loved and respected Katie. And at this moment, truly, there aren't any words to express any of our emotions. But earlier this week, Courtney read me a verse that really spoke to her heart. And when you came in today, you may have received a remembrance card that has these powerful words written on it. I'd like to take a minute to read them to you. Never forgotten. They served with honor and integrity. Their lives were taken as they served our community. We thank them that their sacrifice and we will never forget them. We feel the pain of their absence and grieve their tragic loss in solidarity with their loved ones, coworkers and friends. Yet in the midst of our pain, we can have hope that God is good, and he is still at work. We are thankful that he appoints those to serve and uphold the law. And we pray for safety, courage, strength, and diligence for all who keep us safe. As we mourn, we are able to lean into Psalm 62. It states, my soul wait in silence for God alone. For my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my refuge. I will not be shaken. And may we live Matthew 5, 9, just as Katie did. 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Please hold on to this card. Read these words often. Know that Katie lived these scriptures. She gave everything. And please also know that as God was her strength, she's our strength. Her family has written the following obituary to briefly capture who she was to them. Caitlin Katie R. Lysing, age 29, of New Richmond, Wisconsin, died unexpectedly and tragically on May 6, 2023, while in the line of duty. Katie, lovingly nicknamed Bug, was born on January 10, 1994, in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, to Roger and Christine Stevens. She lived, or I'm sorry, she graduated in 2012 from Shadron High School and then went to Black Hills State University in Spearfish, South Dakota, where she obtained her Bachelor's of Science degree and played golf. From a young age, Katie knew she wanted to go into law enforcement. She had such a love for people, especially children, who always seemed to gravitate towards her. She was always willing and eager to help others around her, even taking a special interest as a teenager to her peers that were less fortunate than her. After graduating from the police academy, she immediately excelled at police work, first serving with the Pennington County Sheriff's Office in Rapid City, South Dakota, and then with the St. Croix County Sheriff's Office in Hudson, Wisconsin. She was a doer. If anything needed to be done, she was there. Well, with the exception of cooking and doing the dishes at home. She will be remembered as small and feisty. But on October 7th, 2017, she was united in marriage to her best friend, Courtney Lysing, and the two were blessed with their son, Siler, in early 2023. In her free time, she loved reading, puzzles and spending time outdoors, camping, hiking, kayaking, water skiing, and playing basketball. She relished in time spent on all things Harry Potter, watching crime shows, and cheering on the Denver Broncos, despite it putting strain on her marriage with her Packer-loving wife. Above everything, her greatest passion was her family, spending time with her wife, Courtney, and her son, Siler, who were her everything. She had an amazing sparkle for life, always making others around her smile and laugh. Her humor was infectious, her laugh contagious, and her loyal for those she loved most unwaveringly and steadfast. To those who knew her most, she was just so much more. She was survived by her wife, Courtney, son, Siler, parents Chris and Roger Stevens, sister Jordan Stevens and Tom, grandma Julie Hawkinson, in-laws Dave and Beth Brain, sisters-in-law Brittany and Morgan, Lysine and Bradley, dogs Miller and Ranger, many aunts, uncles and cousins, special friends Jennifer and John Paul. She was preceded in death by her grandmothers Sandy and Dorothy, Grandpa Dan, and special friend Zach. This is just a brief look at who Katie was. There are many, many more words to describe her and stories to share about her. And each and every one of these stories are important and they're needed to be heard. I wish we could hear all of them today, but we just can't. So over the next days, weeks, and months, Please remember to share these stories. Give a call, write a note, send a text to the family or the friends that you know loved Katie. These stories will help bring comfort in the coming days. So for today, the families asked a few to share a bit about Katie so we can have an even greater appreciation of the amazing woman and deputy she was.
My name's Sergeant Aaron Bolt. I work for the St. Croix County Sheriff's Office. Uh, the family uh, requested me to say a few things on their behalf. First one's on behalf of Roger. Katie has been my hero long before now. I was the first to hold her at less than five pounds and seven and a half weeks early. She fit between my elbow and wrist. My favorite day was half day kindergarten on dad's day to pick her up. It usually involved French dip sandwiches from Arby's. She was a fun golf date also until she started to beat me on the regular and carried that passion into high school and eventually college golf. We had an unofficial tradition of many trips home from the lake, eating Oreos, Pringles, and Sandfield sandwiches, Twizzlers, and whatever else mom had packed. We'd crank up the pickup stereo, and in her words, jam out to Billy Joel and Red Speedwagon. She always wanted to be in law enforcement. She pursued that profession with the same zest she had for life. Her career moves were tough on mom and I, only soothed by the realization that she was doing what she loved to do with the person she loved, Courtney. That life multiplied roughly three and a half months ago with the arrival of Siler Gray. You arrived in my life earlier than expected and then left entirely too soon. And God needed a hero more than I did. It's not goodbye, I'm saying it's see you later. With love to my hero, Dad. P.S. The secret chili ingredient was brown sugar, not cinnamon. <laughs> my name is Deputy Fred Mangine. On behalf of Chris, Cape came into this world at seven weeks early, weighing in at four pounds, 11 ounces. Since day one, she's been a scrappy little fighter. She left this world the same way. There was no faking it from her. What you saw was genuine. She wore her heart on her sleeve. Smile in these pictures is one she wore daily. She brought brightness into unimaginable situations. For those closest to her, you better have your smack talking techniques perfected and ready. She was quick-witted with great zingers, which were immediately followed by, excuse this description, that shit-eating grin of hers. A twinkle in her eye and her contagious laugh. We ask that in the midst of our shattered lives, that we live the way she did. Be kind, compassionate, take time to really see people. You never know where your next blessing will be. The impact of your kindness will impact someone else. The summer after Kate's first year of college, she had a great friend pass away. Both were huge Harry Potter fans, which followed to her last day. In his honor, she got her first of many, to Chris's dismay, tattoos, with his name and Harry Potter symbol. One of her Instagram posts is, what is of the tattoo on her arm, with a hope ring laying above, and the caption, two constant reminders, to love what you have, because you never know and you won't have the chance to say it again. In times of heartache, always have hope. Let us hear that again. In times of heartache, let us have hope. And remember her with a smile. There's a French term that Chris wrote down and I can't say. <laughs> but it means you're missing from me. The part is that a Part of me is gone. There's a void where you used to be. We won't know how to fill it. Cage the sparkle in our lives, forever burn bright. I'll see you in my dreams, sweet girl. Love, Mom. This is on behalf of Jordan, Katie's sister. She has a few ways of describing Katie. The first one is inspiring. Katie was so confident in who she was, what she wanted, and what she was so passionate about. It didn't matter what anyone else's opinion or thoughts were 
about those things, but she was sure of who she was. Katie was competitive, not only with basketball and golf, but some of my favorite memories are playing cribbage, skippo, board games, Nintendo as kids, and most importantly, stick races and Christmas tree hunting. She always had to be modifying or changing her stick boat to be the fastest, and she always wanted it to be the tree she found that came home with us for Christmas. Kitty was a sister. Jordan being the younger sibling, as kids and teenagers, she drove me crazy, like all siblings do, but she was also the one who would also secretly, or not so secretly, roll her eyes at whatever ridiculous thing our parents were doing. Whether that was mom making us take 500 of the same picture that we never saw, or dad becoming best friends to strangers on a plane that we would never see again. But as we got older and started finding our people in life, she became not only a sister to me, but immediately accepted Tom as the brother she never had. I can still hear the two of them laughing, joking, and feeding off each other as they picked on one another and found new ways to playfully torment each other. Morgan, Courtney's sister, wrote down a few of her favorite memories of Katie. Snacking on Doritos at three in the morning, McDonald's chicken nuggets on every road trip, helping prepare for Santa's arrival by getting carrots ready for the reindeer, grabbing the mouse that gave mom kidney stones, always down to learn new dances and make videos, take any pictures I needed from my senior pictures in South Dakota to family pictures at the lake, and give Morgan the privilege to take engagement pictures of her and Courtney, being, court, or being Morgan's personal counselor for anything she's ever needed since the day Katie came into her life. Bradley will always remember sneaking into the living room, playing Animal Crossing in the middle of the night. This is from Jen, Katie's friend. There are so many wonderful things that we could share about Kate. She had dreams of writing a book, a passion for photography and all things nature, and a fierce love for her family. I'd like to share a story about her bravery and loyalty as a friend. Many years ago, Katie had come to visit me. We found ourselves in a situation where someone was trying to come into the house and had found the spare key. Kate bravely ran door to door with me, relocking every lock they managed to get open before they could open the door. Okay, in reality, we were 10 years old and the person we were locking out of the house was my little brother. <laughs> my parents eventually put an end to our shenanigans, but that was Katie, ready to fight by my side no matter how ridiculous the situation. Katie was always a feisty kid growing up and a little bit of a daredevil, ready to try anything new. When we were kids, I had one of those small dirt bikes, and Kate couldn't wait to take it for a spin. She was so excited to whip that bike around the hay bale loop that had been set up for us, until she missed one turn and went flying into the bushes. She scared the daylights out of her mom, but she couldn't wait to get back up and keep going. That spunky kid grew up into the brave and confident young woman that we all loved. She was always there to support her family and friends, willing to tackle any new obstacle they could face, excuse me, they could be facing without hesitation. Brittany wrote down what she'll remember about Katie. Katie's kindness carried through even after getting bit by her dog Blair. Katie told Officer Grothy, don't worry, her dog is my family, so we're all good. Then after coming home from receiving five stitches, hugged her dog again and told her they were still friends. Katie was always the first to jump up to offer help with anything, carrying stuff in for my car, helping with my dish for a family meal when I broke my elbow. The list goes on and on. The first to help would always be the last in line to dish up for the family. She insisted everyone got in line to eat before her. Katie and I would always share our reviews on audiobooks with each other and send pictures to each other any chance we got to get a jumble pickle from a gas station or a fair. I will not only miss Katie for the genuine person she was, 
but for all the fun she brought to our family and conversations. Courtney's mother, Beth, will always remember about Katie, how she was always willing to help out, whether it was chopping wood, shoveling, meal prepping. She would just jump in and start doing things. She would never hesitate to try something new that Courtney loved to do and supported Courtney 100%. Beth will never forget Katie and Court's giddy up dance. This is from Scott and Jackie Hansen, Katie's aunt and uncle. Scott and Jackie enjoyed watching Katie play Pee Wee football and her reaction after leveling one of the boys. Boys were shocked, and she just walked it off like no big deal. They enjoyed watching her interact with the public, and she always showed up to the autism walks. The kids flocked to her, and she would give them all the attention they, de they deserved. This is from Katie's uncle, Tom Barber. One of Tom's greatest memories of Katie was when he was going to marry Katie's aunt, Kimberly. Tom was sitting up in the front of the church by himself when Katie came up. She must have been about four years old, and she sat down beside me and grabbed my hand. She looked at me and must have sensed that he was nervous. And, and just said in that sweet little voice, it's going to be okay, all is going to be okay. That showed Tom what a sweet, kind-hearted person Katie was, and how she accepted Tom into the family. That's one thing Tom will never forget about Katie, her kind-hearted spirit, even at a young age. She was very intuitive, knowing just what to say when someone needed it. Next one is from Kim, Katie's aunt. Kim loved Katie's infectious laugh, great sense of humor, crazy dancer, patience to play with Spencer for hours, had a quirky twitch, and raising of the shoulder when she was being sarcastic. Katie was a ton of fun to be around, with a deep soul and inspirational. On behalf of Katie's surviving spouse, Courtney Lysing. Kate was my lifelong partner and best friend. She stood by my side and was always up for a new adventure, especially when it came to moving around for my National Park Service career. We spent many weekends camping, hiking, and sitting around the campfire at home. Although I did not say, share the same obsession she had for Harry Potter, she sure tried to get me to. When we first started dating, she thought of the great idea that she'd read the Harry Potter books to me. I didn't even think we made it through the first book before I began falling asleep while she read to me. She enjoyed spending time with our dogs, throwing the ball for Ranger, and cuddling with Miller. Then there's our sweet baby boy, Siler. I am completely heartbroken that he will grow up without Katie by his side, but thankful he'll have the greatest guardian angel looking over him. We built an amazing bond over our eight years together, and I wouldn't trade that for anything. Katie is missed by so many, leaving a hole in our hearts, but she will be our hero forever, looking over us. <clears throat> Again, everyone, for all my brothers and sisters here that don't know me, my name is Fred Mangin. I'm a canine handler for the St. Craig County Sheriff's Office and a leader for our tactical team. This is a surreal feeling being here today, this whole week really. We were just at Hunter and Emily's funeral, and right over to Josh Owens. Funerals are a tricky thing. We are here to grieve, but most importantly celebrate the beautiful life that Katie lived. You may have heard things about Katie. Many of you knew her, or ran into her on calls. When people talk about Katie, Terms like infectious smile, words like confident or loving always come up. 
here to tell you they're all true. When I say Katie's beautiful smile lit up the room, I mean it. Katie had a sense of confidence in her that isn't taught or trained, it just is. She shined through on calls, especially watching her interact with the public. For a little context here, being a canine handler, I have a very small prisoner compartment in my squad car. That means whenever I arrest anyone bigger than me, they're not going to fit back there. Luckily for me, usually unlucky for Katie, she was usually with me when making arrests. She's always willing to handle my transports. For those that don't know me, I have what some might call a strong personality. Others might call me something else, but I know that I can pass off anyone to Katie that was angry or otherwise non-compliant during the arrest. By the time I met her at the jail to drop them off, they'd be calmed down and usually smiling. That's what she did. That was Katie. I quickly gained respect for Katie early on in her time here. She handled herself well in the most violent and uncertain situations. Many times over the last year, I found myself dealing with people that made the decision to violently resist arrest. Some of these times I was initially by myself. But sure enough, each of those times and seeming out of nowhere, a pair of little gloved hands would come flying in without hesitation. There's always a sense of relief when this would happen. Katie's as tough as they come. I knew it would be under control now. That's what she did. She put everyone at ease. That was Katie. When Siler was born, Katie took on a new form to all of us, a mother. It was so apparent to everyone when talking to her how much she loved him. My heart was so full seeing her face light up about him. It's a beauty that only mothers have. Those first months as a parent are hard, especially working nights not being able to come home to help out. Katie never complained once about getting off at 3 a.m., switching back over to mom mode, regularly missing most of her sleep before putting her badge and gun back on, hitting the streets with us to do it all over again. It's just what she did. She was loving. She was a warrior. That was Katie. Our sweet Katie will be dearly missed by all that have known her and lost grieved by all who put on the uniform. She was our sister and partner. She was our friend and we love her. The world was lucky to have her for the short time that she was here and will forever be disadvantaged without her. She had so much more in her, so much more good to give and impacts to have. She had a son to raise, a wife to love. Chris, Roger, thank you. Thank you for raising the young lady into a strong, compassionate woman that she was. Courtney, I know it wasn't easy. I know those hours were long and the nights were lonely while she was out holding the watch. Thank you for sharing her with us. From the bottom of my heart, thank you all for allowing us here in St. Croix County to be impacted by Katie. <clears throat> now I want to address all the law enforcement in the room who may be watching this elsewhere. I know many people in this room have questioned your decisions over the past month. Whether law enforcement is right for you, whether you should stay, you may have talked amongst each other and asked, why would I put my family through something like this? We don't make enough money, how is it worth it? If that's you, I get it. I understand why you may feel this way. My answer to you is to write it down. Write down all the reasons, it's not worth it. All the bad things that can happen, write it down. Then crumple it up, throw it in the garbage and get back out there. Get back to training yourself to be the best protector you can be. Now is not the time to question the why or be indecisive. Now more than ever, our communities need good cops. They need protectors. They need warriors to go out to the trenches every day Hold that line between good and evil. Tragedies like these, like our sister being violently murdered, hold all the evidence you need that evil resides among us. It's in our communities, and it's near our families on a daily basis. 
We need you. And they need you. If you step down now, make no mistake, a new officer will step into your boots, unprepared, and highly susceptible to being victimized while on duty. Train your men and women to the highest level. You owe it to your partners and your community to be the highest ability you can be. I want to commend every one of you for carrying on with this. Our profession is a sacred one. You don't become a protector, you're born one. Every single one of you are the heroes that we need. Katie will always be one of us. She was a hero through and through.
Hello, my name is Scott Knutson. and I'm sheriff for St. Croix County. Uh, you know, we we got dealt a blow the other day, um, but Katie, boy, what a sweetheart she is. She was always, well, one of the reasons I had that picture put up behind my press conference was, that's the best picture I've ever seen. I mean, this gal, when she walked in a room, that smile knocked it out of the park. Um, and I mentioned that if you had a bad day, that was that smile that, that, that got to see you. And then you didn't have a bad day anymore. Um, there was so much to like about Katie. She was just energetic, worked hard, quality work. But most importantly for me was the way she treated people. She had such a way of treating people with dignity and respect, and that carried a long way for everything that we do in a profession. I'm going to touch upon what Freddie said about when he would make arrests and then Katie would show up and all would be good. And well, we told Katie to follow you around that night. <laughs> it saves my complaints. Um, but to Courtney, Siler, Roger, Chris, Jordan, Dave, Beth, you have our heartfelt condolences on this loss. A tragic loss that was tore from you and it was tore from every one of us. The, uh, the way in which, it, in which it was done, a heinous act by a horrible criminal. I asked Pastor Larry if I could call the guy a piece of shit. He said, probably not. But we've thought it, it's in our head. Because as Fred said, there's evil out there. But this is the good that's out there, and that's us. We are that line between the good and the evil. You know, my, my thanks go out to so many during this time of anguish for us. We, uh, like I said, wow, what a punch in the gut. But to all around that stepped up, all the municipal agencies, the sheriffs in the surrounding counties, to cover our shifts, to allow us to grieve, I can't thank you enough. To the men and women of the sheriff's office, for me, you guys are amazing. This is probably the only part I might cry, so I'm going to try not to. But what I've seen over the last week, how you have all come together, leaned on each other, worked through this, all with the memory of Katie, you have my heartfelt gratitude, and I love you all. To the law enforcement people in this room and the ones listening, Fred had it right. We need good people. We are good people. And for too long, here it is, write it down, for too long we've been pushed back in the corner. And that has to stop. Because our communities need us. Now more than ever, our communities are screaming for us. They want good people. They want people like Katie. A deputy once told me a couple years ago, we're good people. We can be good people in a different job. But we need good people in this job. A couple groups that I'm going to address, and I mentioned those the other day. Uh, one, and I will use, as I did the other day, certain certain members of the media. 
Not all. As I said, I know some wonderful people that are in the press. We need a free press. But there are some rotten ones out there. There are some that want to get it first, and rarely do they care if it's right. And all that ever does, in the end, is damages our, our safety, divides us from our communities, and tarnishes their credibility. But in the rush to do that, it does have its effects. And when certain groups decide to push false narratives against law enforcement, against good people, tragic endings. But we're too good for that. And we need to push back. There are certain members of political groups, not all, those in attendance, I love you guys dearly as well some very good friends and very supportive of law enforcement. But there are those out there, and we've got a couple goddamn doozies on each side of the river. There are those that want to keep us down, keep pushing us down, refusing to give us funding for more law enforcement, more people out there to help, respond, take care of calls. We need help out there as well. We need resources, we need the resources in people, but we also need those in wellness, mental health, because this is not an easy job. This is a horrible job at days. Never more horrible than Saturday night when somebody decided to murder Katie. And I can tell you that was the worst call I ever, ever want to have it shocked us it sent us reeling and many of us are still in a fog from that but with the help of the community the support of the community and i hope our support of you folks we're going to get through this we have to for katie's memory law enforcement is a, an extremely tough profession and it takes people as Fred said you have it in you when you're born you don't just make it you have a servant's heart when you take up this profession there's over 660,000 cops in this country the vast majority are really good fine individuals noble people that serve their communities. Out of over half a million, you're going to get a few strays. Then you have to decide if those strays, if they do it intentionally, if they get off track and do not follow the mission that we are on, if someone purposefully gets off the rails, violates our codes of ethics and refuses to treat people with dignity every human deserves dignity but if we have those that get off the rails we need to get rid of them they are doing us no good we continue to get punished for a few however painting with a broad brush as certain members of the media and certain politicians do doesn't help us either. It has been a long struggle this week. As I said, the community has come together. When we went over to Ramsey County, uh, we took Katie over Saturday night, uh, and we were met by hundreds of squad cars ensuring that Katie would get there safely and that we could get our jobs done as well. And then on Sunday when we went to pick her up, my thanks to the St. Paul Police Department for meeting us there. You guys are awesome. Minnesota State Patrol and all the agencies in between. And we brought Katie home to a hero's welcome and well-deserved. 
driving on that freeway, seeing all the overpasses filled with people, all the emergency services on top, fire trucks, all the people standing there waving flags, the American flag, the thin blue line flag, the one they tried to steal from us as well. That's still flying, and you're going to see a lot of those flying today. I was filled with many feelings. Pride, sad, was grief-stricken. But I started to become defiant, as you've seen in my last couple speakings. We have to be defiant. And as we're driving, I'm thinking of those filthy politicians that said, defund us, tear us down, dismantle and destroy us. And I said so kindly, you are losing this. We are winning this. Our communities need us. They need good people, and they're screaming for us. And we are here for them. We need to carry that torch, and we need to remain in that line. Katie did. Katie was that line. And I was proud to have her in that line. And we will miss her dearly. It is said that every person dies two deaths. The first death is when their soul leaves their body. And their second death is the final time anyone ever says their name. We're not going to do that. We will always remember Katie. We will always say her name. And we will remember that smile. Because I have to believe, I kind of feel like you folks did, when you first, when you first met Katie and you first got her, you thought, look at that smile. Look at that bright, shining star. What a wonder she is. And you all said, we'll never let her go. And that's how we felt. But I'm quite certain that on Saturday night, when the heavens accepted her home, they said the same. Look at that smile. What a bright, shining star. And we are never going to let her go. Rest in peace, Katie. As one of uh, Katie's immediate supervisors, I'm here to describe her as a deputy and how she made my life easy at work. I remember the first time I met Katie. She was applying for patrol. She arrived 15 minutes early to the written exam, giving her first dibs at that back row seat. Because if you're a cop, you know we love the back row. Katie was finishing every section of the test in record time. She sat there staring ahead bored. I wondered, did I say something wrong when I met her? Do I stink? Maybe she wants to get the hell out of here. Thankfully for us, that was not the case. Katie's test results were the highest I've witnessed, a near perfect 99%. Before Katie was hired, I had the privilege of gathering and documenting Katie's journey through her life. As part of the process, I had many memorable conversations with Katie's family, friends, and supervisors. The results, Katie was truly an amazing human being. Katie was raised by two wonderful parents, Christine and Roger, along with a fantastic role model and sister Jordan. Katie's family, friends, and community helped cultivate the la uh, values that law enforcement should display. Honesty, integrity, intelligence, and most importantly, humility. Katie graduated high school and college with honors. She was active in sports, and she was always working. While in college, Katie met the love of her life. 
Kitty would light up whenever she talked about Courtney. Kitty was devoted to Courtney, would go to the ends of the earth for her, and literally did. After graduating college, Kitty loyally followed Courtney to the edge of our nation into California, so that way Courtney could continue to advance in her career. Katie trusted Courtney in their journey together. Katie aspired to improve the lives of everyone around her by nobly pursuing a career in law enforcement. Katie realized her dream in 2020. Deputy Justin Grable, a friend of Katie's, suggested that she apply for a deputy position in their jail in Pennington County. Justin warned Katie it would be extremely difficult for her to be hired as a patrol deputy with no experience. Underestimating Katie was never a wise choice. The Pennington County Sheriff's Office wisely hired Katie as a patrol deputy. Katie made it a priority to be known by her first name and not just deputy or cop or officer. Katie cherished her time with the children of Hill City. I know that South Dakota community is likely mourning like we are today. Katie left a lasting impression with others in Pennington County. Peers I spoke to could not think of a single person that wasn't sad to see her go, and many tried to have her stay. Katie was awarded Deputy of the Month in April of 2021. During that month, Katie helped with multiple people in crisis, volunteered for community events, and immediately helped with watch over a fallen officer at their local hospital. Sergeant Randy Harkins described Katie as a quick learner. She was never satisfied and always looked to improve. While closing our conversation, Sergeant Harkins informed me Katie would easily become one of St. Croix County's most valuable deputies. Truer words could never be spoken. Sheriff Knutson swore in Katie almost 12 months ago. It did not take us long as supervisors to realize Katie's potential. Katie's first field training officer was Sergeant Jeff Kennett. As the two of the most benevolent deputies we have, they worked perfectly together. In less than two months, Katie received her first um, documented recognition for how she helped a suicidal person in crisis. She was always there to help. This was one of six incidences um, that were documented of recognition in her young career with our agency. Katie probably grew tired of us calling her a rock star, but it was the absolute truth. While receiving much deserved praise, there was no harder critic than herself. Katie was never satisfied and always strived to improve. Katie's self-evaluations provided a glimpse into her state of mind. Katie made every effort to improve in ways that would enhance her service for her public and to the deputies that she served. In her final self-evaluation, Katie stated she enjoyed learning from Sergeant Bolt and Deputy Mangine. Katie loved all of her law enforcement partners. Katie has taught us how law enforcement should be. She is our beacon, a higher standard that law, all law enforcement should aim for. Katie would likely agree with Gandhi when he said, in a gentle way, you can shake the world. To our visiting officers as you return home, take the qualities of Katie back with you and share them with your staff. We need more cops like Katie to strengthen our bonds with our communities. To the, Pen to the Pennington County Sheriff's Office, our loss is your loss. Your support during this tragic incident will bond us indefinitely. To our area law enforcement partners, we cannot thank you enough during our time of grieving. Many of you were blessed to have met and served alongside Katie. Cherish that impact she had and provided to all of us. To our Sheriff's Office family, I know we're tired, we're defeated, we're lost. We need to pick the pieces back up and carry Katie with us. The memory of Katie will continue to endure as long as we uphold her values of honesty, 
integrity, and humility. To Roger and Chris, we can't, we can't thank you enough for gifting Katie to our lives. The impact Katie provided to us is a testament to you as parents. To Courtney, no, you will never be alone. Trust that Katie will never be forgotten. You both are and will be our family. My name is uh, Rob Pilant. As Larry mentioned, I'm one of the pastors at Brook Life Church in McWanago, and I just want to share a few thoughts with you. When I was thinking about this moment and thinking about the day, it just doesn't make sense. My heart is broken for you, Courtney, Chris, Roger, Jordan, Beth, Dave, Morgan, Brittany, 
and the many other family and friends that are here. My heart is broken for you and law enforcement. My heart is broken for the loss of such a brave hero in Katie. She gave her life protecting ours, protecting yours, protecting mine. My heart is also broken for our world. My heart is broken for our world, which is so desperate that it needs people, brave, courageous people, to put their lives on the line to protect us. Our world is broken and filled with evil, and I don't have to tell you that. It is obvious, especially to law enforcement officers and your families. And yet, as evil as our world is in so many ways, Katie and you do not run away. You run into the fray to push back evil, to help, to support, to bring peace, and provide the environment for the good to win out. Katie is a hero, and all of you are our heroes. In many ways, Jesus painted a picture of what I think of when I think of Katie and all of you. One of Jesus' disciples, Matthew, captured Jesus' words, and I just want to share them with you because they remind me of Katie and you. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Now when he saw the crowd, speaking of Jesus, Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The word blessed is interesting. I looked it up. It means to be venerated or revered. Those who hold these qualities are to be lifted up and counted as blessed. The first one it listed was that poor in spirit. It's a sort of a confusing phrase for us today, but it goes to something that's already been mentioned several times, and that is that humility. It is the willingness to come to a place of setting aside your own safety, your own security, to serve us, to serve people, to serve those who need you, to protect us. And for that, you and Katie are our heroes. It goes on and said, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. My little brother is a police officer. I've had many times where we have talked and he has shared with me how hard it is and how emotional, the emotional damage he and his family have had to endure. How hard it is for his family knowing what he is going to have to go out and face. And then coming back and telling about the close calls. And many times he's been placed in harm's way. Tears are a part of what it means to serve and to protect. And because you are willing to face that for us, you are our heroes. Jesus goes on, blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. Meekness is a concept not really understood well. Meekness isn't weakness, it is power under control. It is the restraint that you all employ to say, to say the, 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 the meekness you display is so impressive. You have so much power, so much capability, so much training. You could use, easily use it for your own gain, for more profit, but instead you use it to help people, to lift people up, to give them hope, to give them a future. Jesus went on, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. I believe that this has to be at the heart of each and every one of you, officers. You believe things should be right, and so you fight for that cause, no matter the cost. You fight to make things right, to keep things right, to be ambassadors of what is right in our world. And for that, we bless you. And you are our heroes. Jesus said, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Katie had this quality in spades. Mercy. You see humanity at its worst, and yet you haven't given up on it because you can believe that it can be redeemed. That it can be something better. There is good in this world, and it must be protected, cultivated, empowered, and fought for. So out of mercy, you fight. 
And because of that, you are our heroes. And Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. I truly believe your motives are pure. <laughs> if it were for selfish gain, you would do something else. The reason you serve is for everyone's gain that you do what you do. Everyone is better because of you and your passion to bring good, to protect good in this world. And because of it, you are our heroes. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. You bring peace in my life and so many others. In a world filled with chaos, you not only have a heart for peace, but the training to keep the peace, to know how to keep the peace, and you spend it every day battling for us. And because of it, you're our heroes. Jesus said once again, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And maybe this is the hardest part of what you do, of being our heroes. Sometimes we forget what you do for us. We see those lights in our rearview mirror and we come to think that you're trying to keep us from the freedoms when all you're trying, trying to do is to keep us safe, to keep us protected, to keep us whole. You suffer persecution when your only goal is to help, to protect, and to serve. There's so much more that could be said about Katie and you, but I think that's enough to describe why we should see each and every one of you as the honorable heroes you are. And while this world might not bless you the way it should, I believe my God sees and my God knows your hearts and your hero hearts. I believe that my God is proud of you and what you do because what you do is what he did and what he does. Jesus saw all of the ugly you see in the world and more and like you, instead of hiding from it, he runs straight into it. He came, he died, he was abused, scorned, mocked, and belittled, saving our lives from this evil world and so much more. The truth is there is evil everywhere in this world, including in us, even the bravest of us. And our only hope is for someone to save us, someone to protect us. Jesus has your heart, but is even stronger and more powerful, and he is doing a work to make each of us new and to make a new world where all of this evil is left behind. You, our heroes, are fighting a battle you will never be able to fully win because there is something broken in humanity that is beyond our fixing. Thankfully, God is able to fix what we cannot and he's preparing a place for those who place their trust in him, a place where everything is the way it should be, the way we know it's supposed to be. Jesus' promise goes like this, he said it right after he rose from the dead. In John 14, he said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Jesus wants to take to us to a better place. What is that place like? In the book of Revelations, it is said that from a vision that John saw, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. The concept of sea there speaks of evil. John said, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, now the dwelling of God is with men and he will live with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. And he will wipe every tear from their eyes. And there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the, road, on the throne said, I am making everything new. Our only ultimate hope is Jesus because he is God and it will take God himself to fix this world, to fix humanity, and ultimately to fix each of us. Faith in Jesus is our ultimate hope and he is our ultimate hero. Having said that, but until he comes, 
Until he brings that new world into existence, we will need people like Katie and people like you willing to do whatever it takes to keep us safe. And for that, I bless you and I thank you. Katie is our hero. She gave her life so we could be safe. And we will never forget. Would you pray with me? Our dear Heavenly Father, we just don't understand why a bright shining light like Katie has to be put out. She stood for the best of what we as humanity have to offer and was an example to so many of what it meant to be a law enforcement officer. Lord, we don't understand evil. We don't know why it exists. We don't know why it's here. We're confused. We're frustrated. But Lord, we'll have to leave that to you, but we entrust Katie to you, that she is with you and that you have her and that you will protect her. Lord, we place our hope in you, our future in you. And Lord, while we're here, I thank you so much for all of these officers who commit their lives to protecting us like Katie did. Lord, take care of Katie, take care of her family, take care of Courtney, take care of Siler. Be with them. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would with me, I'd love for us all just to recite the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. seem so strong my arms will hold you keep you safe at home this walk between us can't be so rare I will be here the truth because you will be in my heart yes you
ask you to please remain seated for today's benediction and following the benediction a member of the Wisconsin Honor Guard will be here to give us dismissal instructions may we bow together and now may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you be gracious to you and lift his countenance upon you and give you peace amen Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for taking time out of your busy lives to honor our sister, Deputy Katie Lysing, along with her family. At this time, all are invited outside to observe the law enforcement honors for this hero. After the law enforcement honors are over, all law enforcement who are taking part in the procession, please move immediately to your vehicles. Watch for the parking attendants who will let you know when it's time to go. Please stay seated while I dismiss an order. And you were just watching the funeral of St. Croix County time, Sheriff's Deputy well, Katie Lysing. Remember. She was killed by a suspected drunken driver during a traffic stop last Saturday near Glendale, Wisconsin. She was just 29 years old. The funeral taking place in the gymnasium of Hudson High School. And as you could see, it's packed. Deputy Lysing remembered today for being a passionate law enforcement official. Many commenting on her contagious laugh and love of family. They say that she always wanted to be in law enforcement and those who knew her say that she did what she did and she loved it.